Okay, and turning points, you can see stationary points. I hope you can see from there, if you cannot please change six. Stationary points, dy by dx is equal to zero, which means one minus lin x over x squared is equal to zero, which means one minus lin x is equal to zero. That means lin x is equal to one, which means x is equal to e. Lin is log to base e, right? Mm -hmm. So that's e to power one. Okay. So at the so-called turning point x to e, so there is only one turning point basically. The next thing is to now justify that that turning point is indeed maximum. Okay. Then you can check your derivative. Find the curvature. Okay. And to find the curvature, let's see what the sign of the gradient is before and after this so-called turning point. The turning point exists when x is equal to e, right? So we will check a point before e and a point after e. So check when x is equal to e plus 1, that's after e. And check when x is equal to e minus 1, that's before e. So everybody put x is equal to e plus 1 in this f of x. Because we want to see what the curve looks like, right? Before E, is it positive? No way. We should put it in the sorry in the in the gradient. You want to know if the gradient is positive or negative? Sorry, not in F of X. After E, it's negative. After E, it's negative. That's this one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is negative. Check before E. I just wanted. To... Wait, it's possible. Dude, which one? No, no. Um, this one. one? The other one. Yes. Okay. Okay. So if we all get that, what does this mean? The gradient is positive means it's going up, right? The gradient is negative means it's coming down. So the curvature is this. That's the shape of the curve. We're not saying that it has to go like that. You can see already from the graph. So it goes up, right? It goes up, then it comes down. It doesn't mean it goes like a parabola. You can see it goes up, then it comes down. Understand? So this is what we are talking about. So clearly, that point E is where it attains its maximum point. Okay? Clearly, at x equals to e, f of x attains maximum point. Understand? So then we find the maximum value. Remember, this is the value of the function, not the value of x. Understand? So f of e, which is when x is equal to e, right? We want to know the corresponding y. f of e will be lin e divided by e. Logarithm of e to base e is what? 1. Understand? Yes? So if the value of y at this point is 1 over e, it means the curve will come from wherever it's coming from, Worst case scenario, it touches that value and it goes back to. So there is no point on that graph that goes beyond it. Everything is at most at that point. And this is the proof. Okay? Therefore, for all x above 0, f of x is less than or equal to 1 over e, right? Which implies that, what is your f of x? Lean x over x is at most 1 over e. That's it. That concludes your proof. So when you see less than or equal to inequality, greater than or equal to inequality, even in topic 1, differentiation could be used. Okay? Just make sure you collect your like term such that there is a value on the other side. If it is greater than, it means this is the minimum point. 
So for example, if I ask you to prove that something is greater than or equal to 3, it means 3 is the minimum point. Are you with me? And if your f of x is here, you could reframe the question and say f of x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. So you are saying, yes, this function 0 is the minimum point. Okay? There are some questions that you can easily prove with just inequality in a number. But this doesn't look like one of those friendly ones. Then differentiation could be used. Understand? So quickly before we go, there's this question here. The sign of second derivative. You know, in the curvature, I only wrote a short note about curvature. I forgot to mention sign of the derivative. f of x is a function. f prime x tells us the rate of change of the function. Then this, because this is derivative of this, then this tells us the rate of change of this one also. Are you with me? Since this is gradient, okay, this tells us the rate at which our gradient changes. Okay, I'll show you something here. So let's look at um, the first one. Uh, no, I think the question is from your book. Okay, let me show you this first. I've explained curvature. Please. Listen, we have just, oh my God, two minutes. I've explained curvature. You can see clearly, when x increases, the gradient reduces. Can you see that? From 2 to 1 to 0 to negative 1 to negative 2. Can you see that? So we are not saying f of x is a decreasing function. We are saying the gradient decreases. Okay? For decreasing or increasing function property, you will consider an interval. Before the turning point, it was an increasing function. After the turning point, it is a decreasing function. But that you are talking about the function itself. But now we are talking about the rate at which the first derivative changes. So you are actually talking about the tangent, the slope of the tangent. So as it increases, this slope continues to decrease from 2 to 1 to 0 to negative 1. So if the slope is decreasing, you are saying the second derivative is less than 0. Second derivative is a rate of change of that slope. Are you with me now? Oh, how is it changing? It's going down. That's a negative rate. Negative rate is what we mean by second derivative is less than 0. Are you with me? And you can see this from your, even from your IGCSE class, but you are not just aware of calculus yet. In your IGCSE classes, when you have a quadratic function ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, you can easily pinpoint when you have a maximum shape or a minimum shape. You have a maximum shape when your a is less than zero, isn't it? When you differentiate ax squared plus bx plus c, the sign of a determines the sign of the final result when you differentiate twice. If your a is positive, there is no way that square that comes back in your first derivative becomes negative. And there's no way when you, this is what I mean. You have ax squared plus bx plus c, yeah? The first derivative gives 2ax plus b, correct? Yes. The second derivative gives what? 2a. So if a is positive from here, this is positive. If a is negative, then this is negative. So clearly, when A is positive, what do you have? A minimum. When A is negative, you have maximum. And that is what we can see from here. When you have your concave downward, which is the uh, shape uh, of the maximum one, you notice that that second derivative is negative. Second derivative is the rate at which your gradient changes. First derivative is the rate at which the function changes. Are you with me? Because derivative with respect to something is rate of change. But rate of what changes is the question. Are you with me? 
So when you differentiate once, you differentiate y, right? So you're actually studying the rate of change of y. When you differentiate the second time from your knowledge of higher derivative, you're actually investigating the rate at which your first derivative changes. Your first derivative has those green lines, the tangent, the gradient of the tangent. So at what rate do the slope of those lines change? Oh, it's reducing, as you can see. If something is reducing, that's a negative change. Okay, that is what we mean by that. And we can see that already from there also. Let's look at the other one. You can see for a minimum graph. It starts with a negative, 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 zero, positive. It's increasing. Oh, that's a good change. Right? Then we say, oh, second derivative is that. So that comes to, that is where this conclusion is brought. Now you're going to have a concave downward if your second derivative is less than or equal to zero, and concave upward if your second derivative is greater than or equal to It's just from that picture. Do you understand that? So the sign of second derivative tells us much about the curvature. That's the point I'm trying to make. I might need to discuss the last part tomorrow. But quickly, in the next, say, one minute, uh, look at this. It's asking us for different things. I think the question is in your worksheets, quickly. Worksheets, uh, shape of shape and curvature, question one and two. Okay, everybody look up if you have the question. The first one says the sign. So if you look at the picture, see the picture, sorry, look at the diagram, because I didn't draw it here. The, the first column is the sign of F. Second column is the sign of first derivative. Second, third derivative, second, the third column is the sign of second derivative, please, not first derivative. So it should be F prime prime. So quickly, can you try not to distract, please? Thank you. So if you look at this, am I right to say this is B? This is a negative, yes? This will be positive, positive, yes? yes. Because they are both. And for E is what? Zero. Zero means neither positive nor negative. So for the first derivative, if you look at it, at point A, you have a negative gradient. Do you agree? At point B, what is the gradient? Zero. So there's no sign. At point C, positive. At point D, and at point E, negative. Now, second derivative, listen. Second derivative is the rate of change, okay? Rate of change of the gradient. If a tangent is drawn at A, you see that from A, it's coming from negative, and it's going to be increasing because it's approaching zero. So this is a positive change. Do you understand that? At B, it's still a positive change because it's coming from a negative. Now it's at zero, still a positive change. We are talking about the rate of change of the set of the first derivative. Okay, so don't get it twisted. At C, that C is where the shape changes. This is zero here. I'll show you. Oh my God! Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me show you something here. There is uh, something I opened before. Okay, this one. See, look at look look look. Sign diagram for first derivative. See. At the point here, study these numbers. Is it decreasing? Can you see? From negative one point, no, zero point, no, no, here, here. Uh, I think it's here. This is minus one point something. It's meant to be increasing, right? After seven, it comes back to six. Did you see that? There's a change there. That point where the changes occur is here. Seven, four, seven, three, no, four, seven, four, seven, five. And you see, this was 7, 1, look, 7, 3, 7, 4, 7, 5, after 7, 5, what do you notice again, 7, 4? That 1.75 is telling you the, the curve is about to change its shape. It's coming from concave downward, and it's going to start moving to concave upward shape. That's where the change in the shape occurs. That's the point of inflection, but a non-stationary point of inflection, and that is your point C. So the rate at which that changes is zero because another property begins. 
And finally, you have negative, negative. I'm gonna have to stop here, I'm so sorry. Uh, what class do you have next? Business. Oh gosh. So, take note of this. Try to, if you can, solve the rest. Otherwise, we can retreat these two questions again tomorrow.